Hello World Wide Web, welcome to Hanging With. I'm GW Pometer. Thanks for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't already, we'd appreciate it if you'd go down here and hit subscribe for us. Come back over and over, watch the show, see our great artists, authors, creators of all kinds, uh, whenever we have them on the air here. Uh, if this is your first time, thanks for hanging with us. We're going to start out like we always do. We're going to thank our partners, Something Unique Magazine, Book, Chocolate, and Wine, the Florida Book News, Authors for Authors, and our brand new partners over at Wordfire Press. They have been bringing all kinds of best-selling authors to the show over the last month or so, and it's just been a fantastic partnership. So we are so grateful for that. Right now, we are here and we are hanging with children's author Wanda Luthman. Uh, she, her first book... Uh, is already out there. It's The Lilac Princess. Go find it. The Lilac Princess. If you have kids, find this book. And uh, we, we talked to Wanda at the Authors for Authors uh, author event here at the O'Galley Art Festival mm -hmm. uh, for the first time. And since then, uh, The Lilac Princess is available in audiobook. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's available on Audible and in iTunes, iTunes mm -hmm. right? So um, what inspired you to begin writing children's? Well, I think my daughter. Um, she's my only child. Uh, my husband has some other children. And um, sort of watching her grow, I realized I was really protective as a mom, only child kind of thing. And that's what sort of led me into this story about uh, an only child princess who was overprotected. And so that was sort of what got me started. Mm -hmm. And you have another book. I have another book coming out yes. at the end of this month. It's about a turtle. It's called The Adventures of Tad the Turtle. The Adventures of Tad the Turtle, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he doesn't like his shell because it makes him too slow. Oh, so, yeah. I see, I see. That's pretty kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what did your daughter think of The Lilac Princess? Well, she, I wrote this actually when she was five and uh -huh. she's 20. So when I read it to her, um, she loved it, you know, and I didn't know how much of it was, well, I'm just her mom and how much she really loved it. <laughs> um, but she, now that she's grown up, you know, she's reread it and she loves it. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That is, that is really great. Yeah. Does she have any children of her own? Nope, not, not yet. yet. Not mm -hmm. yet. She's in college, so. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I have two new, uh, fairly oh. new grandchildren. I have one that's mm -hmm. brand new uh -huh. and, uh, one that's three now. Oh, awesome. And so... Uh, they're they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, well, their their dads were a lot of fun too. But you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. their dad was a lot of fun too. But now they're now now they're all grown, and it's fun to see them deal with the little ones. You're like, <laughs> that happened to you too. So yeah. you know, we had a lot of fun here. Uh, as Sage was recording the audio book, mm -hmm. and um, what did you think of that process of creating an audio book? Because you'd already done publishing. Right. So this is a, mm -hmm. this was a whole new experience for you. What was that process like for you? Right. It was totally new. And what I really liked is the fact that I knew Sage. Mm -hmm. And at the point that she had kind of uh, recorded the um, trial part, the 15 minutes, um, I could talk to her and tell her kind of, you know, oh, do this, do that, whatever. We went back and forth a little bit getting it all mm -hmm. done. And I felt like I don't know how that would have worked with somebody I didn't know. Uh, how did you like that? I mean, writing in general is mm -hmm. a very solitary right. uh, uh -huh. uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that collaboration, how did you mm -hmm. like that? How did you like the collaboration of doing the audio book and things like that? Right, I loved it. You, you know, um, I'm a guidance counselor by day. Okay. And uh, I work in a department where we all work together very closely. So I'm used to working with other people. I like to pick other people's brains. I get a lot of energy from all that. So I like the collaboration. Oh, that's fantastic. Awesome. I know on this side of things, it was a lot of fun. And, and for those of you who haven't, uh, if you're an author out there and you haven't done an audio book yet, it is a, it's a great process. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you choose a narrator that you can work with really well, mm -hmm. there's, there is a dialogue. Right. And, and, and working with you was really neat because it was in real time a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah, so, it was in real time, right. <laughs> there, was, you know, there was a Facebook message that says, hey, I just got this. And it was very, very cool. Yeah, it was. The, it was the, cool. The, it's one of the mm -hmm. things that the, the show here is founded on is the idea that the Internet has really changed the paradigm in arts and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And that was a great example of that, was that collaboration yes. across miles, mm -hmm. live, but live, but live mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Um, 
Are you working on anything else besides we have the turtle book coming out, which is right. I do that one this time. The of, Adventures of Tad the Turtle. The Adventures of Tad the Turtle. Great. Mm -hmm. And the Lilac Princess is already out there now in audiobook. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else coming? So I wrote a third book about a unicorn. Okay. And that one's coming out later this year. Fantastic. And then I've decided to write a sequel to The Lilac Princess. And I'm not sure the title. I'm thinking something like Dirk and the Dragon. Dirk is in the book. Mm -hmm. And um, featuring the dragon. The oh, dragon, wow. a lot of people really like him. So I decided maybe I should play him up a little more. That's great. Some it's time it's time. great as Beowulf for children. <laughs> yeah, because people did. I, we, we, we did too. People uh -huh. really did like the dragon. And, right. and giving the dragon a story now. And, and uh -huh. again, flipping that on its, on its uh, ear and uh -huh. kind of showing. I love what you the morality tale because as a bad guy, I thought it was a bad guy. Yeah. And it sometimes it brought up perceptions and teaching kids that is very hard sometimes. Yeah. It's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And now to take the dragon and give them a story. Right. And so mm -hmm. that that's kind of neat. That's mm -hmm. a really neat thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've got some events coming up here locally that you're going to be uh, at or featured at. Mm -hmm. um, at the uh, we have the West Melbourne Library. Yeah. And um, you're going to be. Uh, a, fe a featured children's mm -hmm. author there. Right, that's this and month, March. Now, we talked off camera a little bit. Mm -hmm. Indie authors have a hard time sometimes getting into local mm -hmm. libraries and events and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a pretty big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we're able to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, libraries are approached by authors and publishing companies on all the mass time. all mm -hmm. the time. And so, you know, they whittle down their collection to what? The, mm -hmm. the community's going to want, and so that's a big deal to be invited in that, so congratulations yeah. on Thank that. Thank you. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a great privilege and honor, so I yeah. very much appreciate that. Do, do you enjoy mm -hmm. meeting readers and meeting parents and uh, readers and things like that? Oh my know? goodness, yes, yes, I do. You know, I've been into the elementary schools, and I talk to them a little bit uh, about myself, about the writing process, because I really want to encourage them to learn to write and love writing and reading and all that. And the kids treat you like you're a rock star. This is awesome. That's I just fantastic. really enjoy their energy and everything. Um, last weekend I was at a craft fair in Coco Village. Wow. And uh, I love meeting the parents and the kids. And um, I always ask the kids, do they enjoy reading? And they'll say, usually yes, because mm -hmm. they're at a book uh, table. And I'll say, well, what do you like reading? And they'll tell me all different kinds of things. And I love it. That's great. Hey, you're a guidance counselor. I'm a guidance counselor. Oh, where? At Merritt Island High School. Merritt Island. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Wanda, we were talking earlier about things that are coming up in the future. You've got some really cool news. I do some have really some really cool, cool news. news. We're going to break this news right here on Hanging With. Mm -hmm. You heard it here first. And uh, you're, you're a guidance counselor at Merritt Island High School. Yes. And so tell us what's going on. So uh, the theater department decided to uh, write some fairy tales into plays for the BPK kids. And one of the students said, why don't we do Miss Lutman's book? And so they came and asked me, and I said, of course you can do my book. Wow. And so they uh, had to write the script, and the other day the, the teacher came down and said they casted for the play. Wow. And so I'm so excited. I don't know when they're going to show it. She just said before the big show, which is April 15th. So sometime between now and then, uh, they're going to be you know, doing the play at the school for the little BPK kids. So, cool. I'm so, 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 so if excited. you're on the World Wide Web and you happen to be here in Brevard County, uh, keep an eye on Mary Island High School. Mm -hmm. They're going to be going out and, and, and doing the Lilac Princess live. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, as a child, did you have a favorite story? Well, so what's funny is, um, for whatever reason, we didn't necessarily go to the library, mm -hmm. and so um, I just had to pick the books off the shelves, and my mom had like some classics, you know, and a hardbound book, and so I wound up reading, uh, you know, Mark Twain's story, <laughs> you know, Tom Sawyer, and so I loved it, he's great, you Absolutely. know, and then I read a lot of... Um, uh, Sherlock Holmes stories. You know, everybody else was reading the Nancy Drew mysteries and all that. I think Sherlock yes. Holmes. But that's what I had access to. And, and oh, you have a huge fan here. We are huge Sherlock Holmes fans here. Mm -hmm. my, Conan, my Conan Doyle is back here. So, uh, my Sherlock Conan Doyle is right there. There mm -hmm. we go. Uh, on camera, even. Not that. <laughs> it's like I did that on purpose. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're huge mm -hmm. Conan Doyle fans here. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, that's how my kids learn to read. I had, mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, our collection is here. But I had a the uh, what is it the young um, young readers collection. Mm -hmm. It is these books, but shortened and abridged for mm -hmm. 
children. Awesome. Um, and so they grew up reading the classics as abridged versions. And then when they got old enough, I'd say, mm -hmm. you know, well, what am I going to read now? You maybe read all this other stuff. And I'd say, go the, read the real one. Yeah. Now go read. Now go read it from Mark Twain. Go read it from mm -hmm. the source. Mm -hmm. um, and but don't touch these. Right. My, my, my Tennyson over there is off limits because it's <laughs> falling apart. It's 150 years old. So, um, but but yeah, read now. Read the real one. And there was more interest in it because they found parallels that they recalled from reading them as a child. So that, that's really kind of neat. That yeah. You do that. Um, yeah. But it also speaks to the. Not a lot of, of, of households, you know, really have a lot of children's books. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you probably won't find a household that doesn't have a Dr. Seuss book because right. it's Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. um, that's because we love them, though. It's mm -hmm. not really, I didn't buy those for the kids. But <laughs> I like green eggs and ham, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, as writers are readers. Mm -hmm. Writers are readers. What are you reading right now? Ooh, so I'm reading this book about zombies, and that's not normally my Zombie. genre that I'm attracted to, but, um, you know, I, I got it from Which an one? indie author, um, Dying for a Living. Dying for a Living. And Zombie. I should know the author's name, it's just not coming to it to me at the moment, but I love it. I'm totally sucked in and, and enjoying it, so. It, you know what, they have, uh, uh, years ago, zombies in the, in the fantasy fiction uh, area were... Um, sort of, they were the stepchildren of the fantasy era. Mm -hmm. They become very popular, and mm -hmm. there are people writing them very well. Now. Very well, yeah. They're, they're not mm -hmm. sort of the the typical mindless. You know, they were mm -hmm. like the universal bad guy. Yeah. While the vampires and werewolves got all the great press, mm -hmm. uh, the zombies were back there going, "Hey, what about me?" <laughs> uh, and now it's it's kind of flipped over, and the zombies mm -hmm. are they're a big thing right now. We talked to uh, Kevin J. Anderson at Pensacon last weekend. And um, uh, Kevin's a, a, a best-selling, uh, New York Times best-selling author, several times over. And um, but one of the one the his series that he has out that we thought was really cool was it was Dan Shamble's um, uh, it was Zombie Private Eye. Mm -hmm. And he kind of took he, you know just created a private eye that was back from there was it back from the dead and back on the case. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're, they're, they're coming around. Zombies yeah. are having their moment in the sun, as it were. Yeah. Um, so. Uh -huh. Um, now, we, we like to have a little fun. It's hanging mm -hmm. with. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not all about the books, mm -hmm. although we like to talk about all kinds of things. But we want uh, your readers and their parents and those folks to get to know Wanda and, mm -hmm. and say, hey, I know her. I want to go get her book. Um, and so it, you write children's books. So we thought we'd come up with some cool children's questions. Mm -hmm. Growing up, who's your favorite cartoon character? Well, I have to say Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny? Mm -hmm. Outstanding. And anything about Bugs that made him your favorite? Or? Oh, he was just... Funny. Just funny. Yeah. <laughs> funny fun. was, I love the Flintstones too. They were cool. Yeah. Their life, you know. I yeah. like Don Dino, all that. Any favorites from your daughter's childhood? Because they, well, they, 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 they did our, lose I, clues I, with her. I was like gonna crazy. Say, our children had very different cartoons than we had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, their children have very different cartoons. I don't even, I don't know what a lot of them are now. Right. On. Me neither. In, in, Lost track. In fact, Michael, uh, the youngest here, mm -hmm. watches YouTube all the time. Mm, I mean, okay. He watches YouTube and the internet and Netflix and, mm -hmm. and you know, very different. I, it's very different. Mm -hmm. So it's really neat. Um, yeah, uh, we got, uh, <laughs> okay, World Wide Web, behind the camera here are some of the uh, most colorful people. They don't tell me what the cards say sometimes, so it makes me laugh. Uh, apparently the World Wide Web wants to know, what do dragons eat? Mm, that is a good question. Not lilac princesses, we did learn that. <laughs> right? No, not lilac not princesses, lilac princesses thankfully. thankfully. Mm. Um, well, I would think they're carnivores. I would think. Mm -hmm. One would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whatever they're eating is going to be roasted. Right. Yeah. That's a really bad joke. I'll cut that out. No. <laughs> okay, we do like to have some fun. We have had a lot of fun at fantasy, speculative fiction conferences in the last couple months, mm -hmm. and it introduced us to uh, some wonderful people and wonderful questions, and we know there are lots of types of people in the world, and so we want to know if they put the Harry Potter Hogwarts sorting hat on you, what house do you end up in? So you're going to... Um, maybe be surprised by this, okay. but I have not read Harry Potter. Really? And I haven't been to any of the movies. Wow! Wow! So, um... Wow, that's... 
Yeah, so I don't know. I've heard there are some Shock. houses. And yes. Oh. And all yeah, they, they, I, I, I know she's wonderful, but there's a long story why I didn't go down that there, road. Yeah, no, they, mm -hmm. you know, they became very popular. I, we, my kids were halfway through the book series before I knew it existed, mm -hmm. and um, and but and it was becoming popular. And I remember going to them and saying, "Have you, have you guys, you know, what, you, what is this story?" Mm -hmm. And uh, and so my uh, uh, second son at the time handed me a book and said, "Just try it, you know, whatever." And I'm thinking. Well, it, it gives a cover every uh, very good to kids book. This mm -hmm. is something I would read to you, which I something I want to read for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I read it and I went, Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And and so it was a lot of fun and, and I see why it became such a pop culture phenomenon. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, that's wow. I know, sorry. Yeah, wow. <laughs> she she shut me up. Yeah, I'm sorry. People don't do that very often. But it did happen here. It really did. Um, so uh, what what uh, what kind of things uh, do you follow out there? Literature, movies, what kind of stuff do you like? Well, I do like Star Wars. Do you like Star Wars? And I do okay. like Star Trek. Um, okay. So I do like that you can like, you, kind of science yes, fiction Yes, World stuff. Wide Web, you can like both Star Wars <laughs> and Star Trek. Yep. Mm -hmm. you, it's like mom and dad. You don't have to decide. You can like them both. both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So you like sci-fi? Mm -hmm. Sci-fi. Uh, new Star Wars movie? Yes. Ben? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I liked it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I liked it. I thought they transitioned well. To We've been talking to a, a lot of authors people. out there, a lot of creative people. Who is Ray? I don't know. You don't know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not going to speculate? Yep, yeah, no. Okay, Peter J. Wax gave us a really neat theory about mm -hmm. who about Ray was uh -huh. that actually caused an argument with one of the many Star Wars writers. He said, <laughs> I didn't agree with it. I said, this is who Ray should be. So, uh, but yeah. Um, so, who is your, okay, you like sci fi? Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite starship captain? Well, <laughs> I have to say Picard. He's yeah, Picard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, well, you know what? Very cerebral. Mm -hmm. Very cerebral. Very, you know. But still sexy. You, you mm -hmm. got. The, you really you got the, the captain thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as an old service member, you know, mm -hmm. you don't get to be captain when you're you know 25. Mm -hmm. Captain Kirk is cool and all, but right. it's mm -hmm. really hard to do that. Nobody's been able to figure it out in the real life world yet. <laughs> And uh, but Picard had that experience, and that was, I mean, that, that's kind mm -hmm. of a cool thing. That's, our mm -hmm. favorite captain here, we'll, we'll have to admit, online, is mm -hmm. uh, Captain Mal from Serenity. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's, he's our guy. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so I guess they're, they're flashing cards back there to tell me stuff. I guess we're going to kind of have to wrap it up here a little bit. Uh, but we do want to remind you all to go ahead, please, leave a comment down below. Uh, I know we're a new channel. We don't get a lot of comments and things like that. But we want to hear from you about uh, anything. Just leave a comment and, and leave Wanda a message, and we'll make sure she gets it. Uh, but if you do that, we're going to enter you for a giveaway of Wanda Luthman's The Lilac Princess on audiobook. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, when you've done that, uh, we will reach out to you and let you know uh, who were the lucky um, recipients of The Lilac Princess in audiobook. That's coming up. Um, that's going to about wrap us up. We want to remind everybody, The Lilac Princess uh, in, in paperback. Uh, you can find this at online bookstores. Uh, you can also uh, check the links that we're going to put in the description to find links to The Lilac Princess, uh, to Wanda Luthman, uh, to the audio book. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I will go ahead and update those links a little later on down the road when the new books are out. So we'll make sure that people can still find that. Uh, who's this little guy here? What is this? Well, this so this is... Uh, just a little toy, but yes. I thought he would be a cute example of Liam the dragon in yes. the book. Yes, yes. So. Yeah, we got the purple. We got the purple show happening. Yeah, so this is this is the lilacs and the dragon, and the, mm -hmm. this is fantastic. I, I like would, purple. And they're gonna make us go anyway, so we're gonna go. And we want to say thanks real quick again to Something Unique Magazine, Books, Chocolate, and Wine, the Florida Book News. Uh, authors for Authors and Wordfire Press for sharing these videos all over the World Wide Web. Uh, we are so happy to have these partners sharing these videos. I'm GW Pometer. We've been hanging with Wanda Luthman. Remember, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Uh -huh.